Creationists have claimed time and time again that new information cannot be added to a genome. This video is aimed at addressing this fallacy. First, let me begin by saying that evolution works primarily by modifying what's already there. Rarely, however, completely new information is added to an organism's genome. A genome is a collection of DNA. Now, this has been observed many, many times over, and the mechanism by which it occurs will be discussed in this video. First, we have to define what information is, though. A uh, definition that pretty much everybody can agree on, even creationists, is that if an organism displays a brand new trait via the creation of it in its DNA, the new information has been added to the genome. Now, for evolution, there are two primary ways in which information is added. First, let's take a look at it at a population level. Let's say there's a population of black beetles. If an individual in that population has a mutation in the gene responsible for making the black pigment of its shell turning the shell green, then a new possible trait has been added. You see, before there was only one color that the beetle could be, and only one gene. Now there are two possibilities. The green colored gene is brand new, and a new trait, hence new information has been added. So this example should satisfy most people's curiosity as to whether or not new traits can be added, but this is often not enough, especially for creationists. Creationists will often shift the target and state that that's not new information, but merely the modification of something which was already there. Fine then, we can play that game. Now the second way that new information can be added to a genome occurs at the level of the individual, and it is much more rare, but it does not involve the modification of an existing gene for a similar function, but instead creates a brand new stretch of DNA and a brand new, never before, before seen trait. Now this is a well documented um, process and phenomenon that occurs via a two step process. First, a gene is duplicated. Now duplication events in organisms are very, very common. A quick search of the literature yields almost 14,000 results for gene duplication to date. Now, gene duplication is a form of mutation that occurs when a cell is replicating. Note that for this to happen, only one gene has to be duplicated. But there are hundreds of examples of organisms that having their entire genome, that's every single gene in their body, duplicated. Yeast, for example, underwent an entire genome duplication event around uh, one million years ago. We don't need an entire genome, we just need one single gene. The point is that um, gene duplication is a common, undisputed event that results in an organism having an extra copy of an existing gene, a blank slate, if you will, upon which muta mutations can accumulate with no ill effects on the organism, because, after all, the gene was duplicated, and they still have the original gene intact. So gene duplication is step one. The second part that has to happen is that a mutation has to occur in that duplicated segment to grant a new function. Now there are many types of mutations that can occur, but a common and useful type is called a frame shift mutation. Every three bases, or letters in DNA, such as A, T, G, C, codes for an amino acid. When you connect those amino acids, you get proteins. So it goes DNA, amino acids, proteins. DNA has a very specific reading frame, where those three bases will code for only one amino acid. For example, A, G, A will always code for arginine, nothing else. A CA will only code for threonine, nothing else. And it's important to note that if you change just one single base in the DNA, every amino acid for the remainder of the gene, and hence the entire protein that the gene makes, will be changed. For example, let's take a look at this frame shift mutation which was documented in a gene. The top sequence is the original gene, and the bottom sequence is the mutated gene. At the top of each row, you can see the raw genetic code. That is the A, the T's, the C's, and the G's. Below it is the amino acid that each three letters or bases that the DNA codes for. Here, a frame shift mutation deleted the G in the fourth position of the original gene, that's up at the top, in red. Now, as a result, every single base moved down one space. This results in, in every single amino acid following the mutation to be completely different. So instead of having this gene produce a protein made of histidine, alanine, valine, glycine, etc., it now makes a protein made of glutamine, tryptophan, glycine, and arginine, and so on and so forth. And note that this is a completely different protein, completely different from the original gene's product. So what's more is that the amino acids that a protein is made of determines how it folds, and how it folds completely determines its function. Thus, changing the amino acid sequence in a protein gives it a completely different function. Please note that this is not merely the subtle modification of a gene that's already there. It's a brand new stretch of DNA with a brand new function. And this is precisely how new information is added to an organism's genome. Gene duplication to provide the new stretch of DNA, followed by a mutation which creates a brand new protein. 
Now, this fits even the most strict, absurd definition of new information, and it's been documented several times. One famous example is that of nylonase, an, an enzyme which d digests nylon. So, nylon was first invented in 1935. Thus, the gene responsible for dealing with it had to have come about after its invention. In 1975, a team of Japanese scientists discovered a strain of flavobacterium in a pond containing wastewater from a factory producing nylon that was capable of digesting the nylon and using it for food. Genetic analysis determined that the new gene, termed nylonase, occurred as a result of gene duplication followed by a frame shift mutation, which is the exact mechanism that which I described earlier. Here, we have the appearance of brand new information, never before seen, brought about by simple, basic genetics. The interesting thing, though, is that nylonase isn't alone. A recent study from 2006 found 470 examples of new genes arising as a result of frame shift mutations in human beings alone. The link to that study is listed in the video description. So in conclusion, I've demonstrated two unique mechanisms by which new information can be added to a genome. Additionally, I've provided concrete example of it happening in nature, as well as 470 additional examples to it happening in human beings alone. Look, the time for reasonable doubt has come and gone, and it's time to squash this creationist misinformation. These studies provide just one more nail in the coffin. Thanks as always for your time, guys. Hope you enjoyed.